special kind of uh, shots that I took, um, you know, regularly, and I uh, went there for boron research uh, of radiation. But the boron research was shut down because of the catastrophe with the computer, with the uh, the uh, uh, atomic radiation that uh, we all are experiencing now in our oceans. Uh, uh, so I had to come back. Come back to California, and then I went to Mexico. Now Mexico, I went there for um, uh, three weeks solid, stayed there, and went through all kinds of things. And came back home and, and brought all the things I learned there. So I went through a laser therapy. I was doing this in a home nine months straight, every single day. I did a sauna, a portable sauna. I had uh, a light table. I had uh, ultraviolet. Ah, it just went on and on and on. I had to do every day, for four hours a day, nine months straight, not one day that I miss. That's how I beat it. And then what happened is I had the cancer, it was here. And I, the alternate therapy was coming up and catching the cancer. But it couldn't catch it. So the cancer spread. So it went from this side of the neck to this side of the neck. And it also passed the midline of the tongue. It went over in the tongue, into the muscle of the, of the tongue. <coughs> then I had to go to regular therapy, regular traditional therapy. And because my immune system was built up, Okay, my immune system was coming up because of Mexico. I was able to tolerate the radiation and the chemo. So that the radiation, I had to go 33 straight days to be radiated for this big thing here, okay? And it just, it was unbelievable. So after 33 days, I had an MIR um, and I had a PET scan, okay? And I'm 100% cured of cancer. I have no cancer, zero. <laughs> anyway, I hope that kind of tells you that if you have cancer or someone you do have, that you know has it, that you don't have to go under. You can fight it. You can you can tackle this thing. But you can't just sit and expect to have everything. We're at work. You have to work. Anyway, so um, had a real transformation here yesterday that is so amazing. Is that I'm going to do a reversal here with NFT, a real reversal. So what's going to happen here is that gallery in there, yeah, it has my work, is going to come here, and all the work and, and machines and everything going in there. So this is all going to be a gallery the next time you come. And it'll have all the sculptures and all the work and so forth and all the new things. Because I prayed that I would ever have a studio with skylights, but have a tall ceiling so I could make big things. So I mean Richard came along, oh my gosh, we had it. But well, I got the cancer and I was gone for a year and a half or whatever. But th this reversal has made me so happy. It's another blessing. I mean the cancer survival is a blessing members of the uh, NFT here and also that this is going to be a gallery. That's kind of stuff. Okay, that's a reversal. So, let's see what I can start here. Uh, this pyramid of circles is one way of looking at form and comparing form that is new with what is old. It's very important that when you find something that you're going to research and you find something new, you have to go back to history and make sure that there's some, if there's a connection. It's very important to find a connection if there is one. So, for instance, uh, this this uh, triangle here uh, has a circle, and one one circle, okay, is 360 degrees. We all know that. Okay, so. Uh, two circles, you know, uh, two circles is what? 720 degrees, right? And this goes on and on and on, all the way down. I went down to 25, and of course you can go more than that. 
But every time you have to multiply here or add. So we have the 360, the whatever, whatever, all the way across. And this is a way to com compare forms. So the first form that comes into the world is number two here. It's two circles or two triangles. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, 720 degrees. So one triangle has 60, 60, 60. That equals 120. Awesome, 180. So one, uh, that would be, it would be two of these to make this one here, the first one. But there's no such thing as a two-sided form. You can't do it. It doesn't work. It stays still a plane. But when you get to the third one, which is 720, okay, so that's, uh, that would be times four, which equals, uh, is that right? Yeah. So that would be this one right here, the second one, is a tetrahedron. That's the first form that comes into the world. This is a tetrahedron. Okay. So if we go to the second one, or the third one, there isn't one. If we go to the fourth one, okay, the fourth one in the platonic forms is a cube. Platonic forms have this relationship. So the five, there isn't one. So we go to the six, which is six times one hundred and uh, it's six circles. So each circle is 360 degrees. So 6 times 360, okay, works out to be an octahedron. That's an octahedron. This is an octahedron. Okay. Frank, you heard the cube and the octahedron. I heard somebody say something. This six is the cube. You just reverse it. Right? Ah, you're right. We got it right. Okay. Now the next one that we have, seven, no, we have to go down to nine. We have to go into the icosahedron. So the icosahedron is ten. Now, what's really interesting is the, that between the, 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 the uh, octahedron and the uh, cube is a form. And that form is the chesapeake. Isn't that amazing? That never seen before, ever. I found all of these forms, 22, 20, 17, 16, 13, 12, 11, 9, where it's 5. So I brought a few. I said, you get to see them. So I want to show you one thing on how things transform. This is a cube, okay, and this is a dodecahedron. Now, most of you uh, who are in the platonic forms, I've seen these two, a cube and a dodecahedron. 
both sides. Yeah? Now, if you look at pyrite crystals, pyrite crystals have a donut key. These are pyrite crystals. Dodecahedron, cube. So, if I put the cube here, I put the dodecahedron. There they are in nature. So, how do you get from this one to this one? No one knows how you do that because the pyrite crystal is either a dodecahedron or cubes, or a cluster of lots of cubes and lots of dodecahedrons. Now, what happens between here and here? So I studied this for quite a while, and I found out how it happens, how it happens in nature. So the first thing that happens is that the cube, throughout history, everybody has pushed corners, pushed them. So if you push this corner and this corner, you push this corner and this corner, and you push them together like clay, it makes a tetrahedron. It makes this form. That comes from this cube. If I press it in here, press it. OK, if I press all the points of the cube, all of them, which are eight, it makes an octahedron. It's coming out of the cube. But this is what I discovered. If I push edges, not corners, but I push edges, I get the dodecahedron. Now you don't find this in the books because it's just not there. I studied this for a long time to find it. And so I made these here. Here's the next one. So here's the edge, here's the edge. See it? I push this edge, it turns into this edge. And if I keep pushing it, it turns into this edge. And I keep going, it turns into this edge. That's something you've never seen before. So I can put these all up here for you to show you. seen before. Now the Chestahedron I've studied for uh, 16 years. 